sometimes you can smell you can smell the injury. Venous blood and arterial blood look completely different. One is darker, one is brighter red, rich in oxygen, and they smell different. It has this copper kind of iron smell. Sometimes I can smell it. It's not even comparable to like a woman's period. It's different. You can tell if they've been bleeding for an hour, a couple of hours. You know by how caked up it is. I'm not just talking about a cut, I'm talking about really big wounds. Sometimes the guys will be able to keep their hands, sometimes not. I remember one guy asked me, hey doc, um, do you think I'll be able to keep my hand? And I said, yeah man, no problem, you know. I've seen worse, but I failed to look at the wound in detail. And uh, his hand was wrapped up and he was still moving his fingers, so I said, yeah, you can keep it. But when I took the, the, the blouse off, um, there was only the skin and tendons, but his whole bicep was gone and everything was gone and of course his hand would have had to have been cut off. After that I didn't tell anybody that they're going to keep their legs or hands or that they're going to make it. I just didn't want to have that on my conscience. Some of the guys are doped up on morphine and some of them are joking because they don't feel the pain yet. Like, hey, I'm missing my hands, doc. Or, you know, hey, somebody stole my hands. Let me know if you find a leg out there on eBay or something or a hand. You kind of smile and in the back of your mind you're thinking that this guy has great, great character, great sense of humor. Unfortunately, you know his life will never be the same. Neither would mine. We have our people that are dying in front of us and all we can do is give them pain medication. We know that they're dying. We had one guy, I remember his, he had his eyes open. One of them was pretty messed up, but he was still conscious. He was trying to say something. He was kind of being combative, but we couldn't make out what he was saying. He had part of his brain hanging out from the back, and all we could do was give him pain medication. We hoped that's what he was asking for, just to take the pain away. A lot of times the injuries were so bad that I'm pretty sure at the time a lot of them just wanted to get rid of the pain by whatever means necessary. I remember the ones that died, but I don't remember all the ones that I treated. But you know, every so often they'll spot me out and say, I used to live in California by Camp Pendleton, so um, they'll spot me out and say, hey doc, remember me? You know? And they're missing a hand or a leg, and I don't know from where. They're like, remember Fallujah? Man, thanks, you know. I think, I, I thank you for my own safety. No, I think for my own safety, I try to block out a lot of the traumatic things that I saw. But you can't escape it. It's pretty messed up. Um, and I'll just, we, we saw about 700 casualties um, uh, from... Uh, Marines, soldiers, uh, Iraqis, kids, a lot of KBR employees, a lot of uh, Blackwater, uh, Dine Corps, and a lot of different other agencies that were out there. Um, uh, so it's, I mean, you, you know, you're, you're constantly, um, a lot of times when you go medevac somewhere, uh, uh, it'll be so drastic that the helicopter will leave and I'll have to stay there. So, you know, uh, you, know you work with, um, out there, as long as you're an American, you know, you're, you, you're going to help them out. Um, I heard from some of the guys about how around Fallujah, after about 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening, you have to shoot dogs. They call it Operation Scooby-Doo. I remember that. You can't shoot some of the dogs because, you can shoot some of the dogs because there's so many dogs out there and they walk around with body parts, sometimes in their mouths after the bombings and stuff. So you're allowed to shoot dogs. But everything changes out there every day. Some days you can shoot Iraqis, some days you can't. Some days if they have a gun pointed at you, you can shoot them. Some days only if they shoot you can you shoot them. It changes every day. So you kind of forget what rule is going on that day. Um, re, you know, if there are any. The reason why we shoot dogs is because they're, a lot of times they're tearing apart bodies and babies and stuff and you know. Um, so it's a uh, we treated insurgents also, and frequently they made it. I look at it sometimes that maybe by our saving their lives, they might look at us differently. But I don't know if it really matters. I don't know if they really care. They'll just go right back out there and try to bomb us again. They know we're going to help them, so it's not a big deal to them, you know? They'll engage on us with an RPG or explode an IED and they'll just put their hands up in the air because they know we're not going to harm them. They know we don't use any unconventional methods of treating our prisoners. 
we actually treat our prisoners the best. I was married to a Lebanese woman, so I speak Arabic, and I understood the Iraqis. That was my first wife. My wife doesn't like that part. <laughs> I, I, you know. uh, I was, uh, so I speak Arabic and I understand, and I understood the Iraqis. I knew what they were saying. They think we're weak because they know that we're going to help them. Even the Iraqis that are our friends, everybody and their mother has a cousin who's an insurgent. We, we would work with the Iraqis out there and uh, um, it'd be like uh, someone invading Texas and, uh, you know, um, they, they, uh, some of them that are trying to work with us, they have family members that, that are, sometimes inadvertently, they, they'll catch collateral damage, and, and uh, so like the family members, they may have a distant cousin who got killed by a bombing, and the guy's working with us, and he starts building resentment, and he doesn't say nothing, and that's kind of like how the, uh, um, a lot of our positions get compromised and stuff, you know, um, but it, should be getting better. Um, everybody knows, everybody and their mother has a cousin who's an insurgent, the Iraqis. In Iraq, everybody knows someone who knows someone who's an insurgent. And naturally, they're going to protect their own. Regardless, it doesn't matter. They're all Iraqis. I mean, of course, you don't want to cause any harm to the ones who allegedly are not there to hurt you. But a lot of times, it's just very little different differentiation. Whether they're helping them out by giving coordinates or counting steps, counting paces or telling when the next convoy is going to leave. You don't know who's who. You don't know who your friends are out there. You just kind of lose it after a while. You just kind of say, screw these damn Iraqis, you know? Forget about them. Sometimes the guys you're fighting are from Syria or from Jordan or from different provinces or maybe a different party. The Ba'ath Party, um, Saddam's nationalists. I was at an Iraqi internet cafe and the guys were surprised that I was speaking Arabic. The, the guys, I mean the people that owned it, the internet cafe, they were Arab, Iraq, um, they were, um, they were Iraqi. And I'm hanging out with the guys, talking to them, and I was still pretty fresh to the war. Um, I, I think it may have been like my first time that I had, if you want to call it downtime, but I'm talking to them and they're giving me sodas, and, and mind you, um, we would get these shipments, right, that would be uh, like our, our shipments were, were constantly being robbed. Um, and uh, well, these guys these, at this internet cafe, you know, they sell Coca-Cola and stuff, you know, and the Cokes from, you know, if you guys tr travel abroad, I'm sure a lot of people here from oil, you guys know in Saudi Arabia and stuff, the Coca-Colas, they have different, you know, well, um, well, they're selling us like American Coca-Cola, you know, like, but, you know, so yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, so um, so they're uh, they're giving me sodas and they make this pita bread, which is pretty good actually. In these stone ovens, it's, um, they're eating the bread and I'm talking to the guys and drinking soda. This guy was talking about how the computers are really slow and they need to get computer parts. The guy asked me, where can I get them? I said, I know this place on the internet, and I showed him the website PriceWatch.com, and and I said, but you need credit cards. They said they can't order anything to Iraq because since the war, the post offices don't deliver to Iraq. The Iraqis have to order things to Syria or to Jordan, and they have to pick it up there. So the guy asked me, hey, can you order stuff to be sent? And I said, I don't think I can do that. <coughs> I think that'd be a conflict of interest, even though these guys weren't insurgents or anything like that. Um, allegedly, they have to go to a you know, screening to be able to um, be qualified that, that you know, we can uh, provide patron, you know, we can. so, uh, well, the guy says, uh, I said, I don't think I can do that. I think it'd be conflict of interest. The owner comes in and they're talking to the owner about it. I said, well, I couldn't do it anyway. I didn't bring my credit card and, with me and you know, but in, in, I, I'm telling them this, but in the head, in the back of my head, I'm like, are you crazy, you know? Um, <laughs> I couldn't do anything anyway. Um, and the guy says in Arabic to the other guy, we have plenty of credit cards from all the stupid GIs that order things on the internet here. But he said it in Arabic. Now the other, the owner didn't know that I spoke Arabic. He was telling this to his employees and they told him that I speak Arabic. And he says, yes. 
And he says, oh, we're just kidding. Um, that was the last time I went to that internet cafe. <laughs> um, and I don't know if I mentioned it here, but those guys ended up, the insurgents actually cut their heads off because they were providing, they got killed shortly thereafter, those guys. But um, so, I mean, 